tractor, which is a bit of an exception, this is actually the uh, Ransom's Crawler. This was a, a machine produced by Ransom's the lawnmower people for horticultural work. And the first of these tractors were produced in the 1930s. And uh, they gradually evolved, and probably ran for about 20 years in different marks and models. Uh, they actually recommended that they could use them inside a greenhouse, which is uh, a fairly exciting place, I should think, because uh, if you got that wrong, the, the truck would rather run away. With a trailer plough in this particular case, sometimes they have a mountain plough. Probably ploughing was not their main job, it was more a case of cultivation and things like that. International Harvester, which is an American company, and um, they actually set the plant up in this country. And uh, the International was their, their first tractor, which was uh, a British design. The engine actually was uh, uniquely a British design. Uh, pretty useful tractor. This is a direct competitor to the much more common Ferguson Dexter. Behind that, and we're, at the moment we're at the top corner of the arena when you get in a position. This is a Massey 65 tractor. This is um, a model that was uh, produced. It was originally the Massey Ferguson 40 in the States. They took the, the pressings and brought them over here and put a British Perkins diesel on there and produced a very useful tractor. Useful tractor for the point of view of the ball. And that, at the time, that 50 horsepower was rated to be a big tractor. Behind there, this is the 1956 uh, Ferguson 35. Now, these were actually called the FE35, and they only produced them for about a couple of years before they painted them instead of the grey and underneath was bronze, but you wouldn't think it. That's a brown bronze tractor. The later one was the grey and the red grey tractor when they amalgamated the Ferguson Company with the Massey Harris Company, which is a Canadian firm. Massey Harris, of course, uh, well known. We'll find out more about them. Now, coming down, we have the Ford Major. Now, this was the uh, tractor that was produced. They introduced it in 1952. They gradually evolved the tractor over the next 10 years. And it may sound a very small thing, but it was a big thing at the time. This was about the first diesel tractor that you could rely on to start on a car horse. They were very good starters, the Ford tractor. And when they brought that out, that was really when diesel tractors became a respectable thing for the water gear using power. Another Massey Ferguson now, 35, but you'll notice it's a little bit different on this one. He's now got the three-cylinder engine in there. That was a Perkins engine, and they used that to uh, replace what was previously the standard diesel. In. Then we get the uh, the Ford. Now, Ford, this was the Ford tractor, not the Ford Sun tractor. It succeeded the Ford St. Major, and uh, they introduced those from 1964, and they actually built a new factory as well. The now we've got a couple of uh, John Deere's. Now, normally John Deere's would be in the high horseman tractor, but these are very small L tractors, and therefore they're actually eligible to run the horticultural plant. So, uh, quite a rarity. And each of the single front and plow on the back. Little, little engine, uh, two cylinder engine, vertical engine, which is unusual for a job there. Another ransom crawler now with the, uh, the plow. We've got quite an active horticultural tractor now. That's the ransom. And then the Martin Markham there. That was a firm they were up in uh, Stamford in Lincolnshire. Um, they produced this for. Uh, 
Mercy Ferguson track, Mercy Ferguson farm, because the Hill Ferguson 35 was a bit reluctant to start, so they did have a Fordson as well to tow. Now, this is an interesting example. We've got there the, the tractor on the back is actually the plow, the competition plow, but uh, and this actually makes an interesting contrast. That is the sort of competition plow, but look what the everyday tractor is these days. You've now got a safety cap here in, in the comfort. And that's down, that's warm and comfortable in there. Certainly so changed from the older tractors. Another 35 now, but this is the 135. This was the tractor that uh, was produced by Marcy Ferguson. We, we mentioned the Ford tractor just now, and they started there in about 1964. About the same time, Marcy Ferguson began their World Tractor Series. That's one of them. That's the 66 one. David Brown 990. David Brown, of course, were interesting track because they were the, uh, the people that built the very first Ferguson tractor for Harry Ferguson. And then when they, they fell out with Harry Ferguson over the design, they designed their own tractor and therefore became an independent company. Another tractor now, the W4. This is a McCormick. This is typical of the wartime tractors that were imported to help with the war effort. And uh, this particular one has uh, got a rather large uh, sliding arrangement on there. Interesting machine now. This is the uh, case, um, basically a little four-wheel drive tractor. More horticultural than uh, agricultural, but uh, pretty useful with a two-row power. very contrasting area. This is the Fortune Major. Now these are the tractors that were uh, used during, just after the Second World War. Absolute minimum amount of uh, machinery could be employed. So they still have the same engine as the older tractors, but they did have the new back end. Whereas this 3000 was typical of the tractors that were produced after the new plant was opened in London. Now a bit of a reversal this year. We've got James Hook sitting in the, in the commentary box as usual. He's out on the plane. That's the way forward. And uh, this is very typical of the American tractor. This is an 820. Uh, complete with a very characteristic John Deere plow as well. Four furrow plow. You didn't actually see much of these 820s in this country because at that time the, uh, the dollar of the situation was such that John Deere weren't imported into this country. So uh, unless you were a fanatic like uh, Don McMillan, you didn't come across the 820 until later. But a formal replication. First uh, diesel tractor was the John Deere, but uh, still with the horizontal engine. Another massive Ferguson now, this is the 35, think with the standard engine, and another four 3000, so again, another of the Basildon tractors, but you'll notice the driver has got the safety cab, now this is actually an introduction that came in about 1977, or they were starting to introduce cabs to protect drivers, because obviously, if the, dri if the tractor tipped over, and they did tip over, the driver would be underneath the tractor and would therefore be killed. Now this is the Ferguson TEF. This is the very typical of the tractors produced. There's about half a million of these tractors produced. That's not all diesels. And this is the first of the, the many today. Um, complete with the two-throw plow on there. So the implement, the, the, the plowman the implement mounted on there, but all the weight of the plow was transferred to the tractor. So a light tractor like the Ferguson can do the work of a, a much heavier tractor when you're using a separate plow and you have to balance the tractor. 
most contrast between the paraffin version, which is actually typical of the 1950s traction, and the 1960s traction, this famous Massey Ferguson 35. You can see there are similarities and of course there are improvements. They've got more gears, they've got more comfort, but still basically they would still operate the same implement. Another 35 now, and again you can see the operating. He's got just a simple safety frame on there, which gives the driver a bit of protection when the, when the tractor tips over. Ports and Major now, this is quite an early Major. And again, he's got the safety frame, but you'll notice in that case, the safety frame is actually detachable, or it splits just by the uh, tractor mud guard, so the top part of the safety frame can be taken off for use in, uh, when you're using it in those buildings. Now, here's an absolute squadron of Ferguson's. What a nice tractor they are. Now, this is the great thing about them. When you look at them, there were 500,000 and they all came out exactly the same from the factory. Well, yes they did, but there was the petrol diesel, the paraffin engine, there were narrow versions, there were hydraulic brake versions. So they do vary in design, but they're all very versatile. And the great thing is that because they've got the mountain plow, you see they've got no implement nothing behind the tractor at all on the ground. So they can lift the plow up, they can reverse right into a corner. So if you've got a small area to cultivate, you can't do better than one of these old 20 photos tractors for cultivation. By today's standards, the, the biggest snag is that they don't have live power takeoff and live PPO, live uh, hydraulics means that when you stop the tractor, if you're in neutral, you can lift and lower the plow. If you're in gear, you can only make the plow move if the tractor's actually moving. So, by, whereas, for example, the Massey Ferguson here, he can just lower and raise the plow quite independently of whether the tractor's moving or not. So we've actually got the squadron of Ferguson's and now a pair of Massey Ferguson's. But this last one is a 35X, so a little bit more power, a little bit more uh, grip, lift off, and again, folding. In this case, he's got a folding safety frame, so that protects the driver. Now, of course, you can go on the 1055 International. This is uh, a later tractor, and he's now got the safety cab, so he's now sitting in the cab and that was when driver, uh, tractor drivers changed their, cons their uh, shape considerably. Up until that time the tractor driver had been the weather being the chap who was sitting out in the, in the weather in all the weathers on the tractor, perhaps with a, a sack and a brake coat to keep it warm, but basically there. Then suddenly in the cab with the radio control the driver was now in the drive became the pale and interesting creature that we've got today. This is a Zeta, this is a 5511, 5511, useful iron curtain tractor. The great thing about them was they had big cabs, partly because uh, very often I think in, the, in Czechoslovakia they had an agent of the government in there as well as the tractor drive. Now this is a very interesting tractor, this is the Massey Ferguson 1200 and the, the great thing about this is that the tractor bends in the middle. You'll see when he goes around the corner at the end that the front axle moves in relation to the back axle to allow the tractor to, to turn. Also, uh, he's got a very long plow on the back, so that swings out and uh, I think you might find that plow swings a bit when it gets out from the corner. If it does, they get a bit excited behind. Another international now, this is the 523. This is actually a German-built tractor. Uh, international started importing tractors from Germany to uh, supplement the, the British built one. Now that's the first of the Ford and Dexters. We have a lot of uh, Massey Ferguson, so the three cylinders. But this is actually Ford Fees in this country.
David Brown, as I say, the only one here. Um, interesting uh, tractor manufacturer they were, David Brown. Oh, but Huddersfield, right by um, Last of the Summer Wine, the, uh, the uh, television programme. That, that's uh, shot around the Huddersfield area. Melton Mill, so uh, you don't actually see David Brown's on there. International. And this, of course, is very typical of the, the wartime tractors that came in to help us out during the war. Ports and Major, this is uh, very typical of a just post-war tractor. Minimum amount of modifications at the tractor factory, but even so, they had to do a bit of bit of body fine because the, the tractors were too tall to go through the original paint, paint arrangement. Now if you wanted to, to do work in, a, in the States, if you've got a John Deere 820, you could rely on that tractor. I saw some in the States and they were probably 30, 40 years old and they were still frontline tractors on farm because they just kept going. Bottom. You haven't been really getting the tractors re realised in front of you, so if we take the tractor, that's a W4 that's just going past now. In front there. So if we go down there, we'll introduce a few of the tractors from down there. Some of them will go around again. That's the force and maybe just going past now. As I say, that was the tractor that uh, was produced just after well but First one to have just before the end of the war. One contrast from the uh, Fortune 3000, which was uh, produced at a different plant, and only about uh, 20 years later. 820, that was the, as I say, the job there. Horizontal two cylinder diesel engine. Very similar to the uh, paraffin engine, very long lasting engine. Now. I suppose it's really a bit like the, the field marshal in this country. Now as you say, the yeah. Massey Ferguson 35 on the decks. So, uh, these were two competitive tractors. You would, uh, whichever one you bought, you would have the other dealer probably trying to sell them instead, so uh, whether it was whites or the Ford or uh, Wilders for the uh, Muscle Ferguson, there's a competition. This of course was the original Ferguson 20. These were the tractors. And I just say, even today, there's probably no tractor really more manoeuvrable than a Ferguson for doing very precise work. When you got to the uh, 35 and bigger, they were just a little bit heavier, but they uh, were still able to pull the same implements, so that was all right. And of course, if you wanted to go on the road, if you wanted a tractor that would start without in Paraguay in the 1950s, the Fortune Major was the one. You could buy a Perkins engine and they would start eventually. And some of the other tractors would start, but they want lots of heat. And if the battery was flat, by the time you got the engine heated up, there wasn't enough kick in the battery to start it up. Ferguson's very uh, versatile tractor. They often have their own uh, two furrow plows. Although they were described as Ferguson plows, they were actually made by uh, normally GKN Sankey. And at one time they sold a plow for nearly every tractor they sold. Incidentally, 
a very much longer plough than most from front to back because the plough turns it over gradually producing the characteristic oak furrow that we uh, yeah. well, this of course is the crawler the, the caterpillar crawler there's a different sort of track altogether and that you could uh, you could go regardless almost of weather conditions and they would keep going because they were riding up on top of the land they didn't go down into the furrow like uh, many of the tractors so they were less fussy about the ground conditions and of course you've got the power there to uh, pull a, a quick plough so there's plenty of power plenty of pull and this is a great thing because the crawler tractor had got was digging into the ground that would actually produce more pull per, per weight than uh, a wheel tractor, where a tractor would get wheel spin, the crawler tractor would keep going, they would keep going. But on the other hand, the uh, tractor cost a lot of money to drive them fast, so the secret with a crawler was to load it heavily and uh, drive it slowly, as opposed to a wheel tractor where often the answer was to drop a furrow off and drive it faster and then it would actually do more work in the course of an hour because it would plow more ground than if you uh, put another furrow on, tried to slow it down and the tractor got a lot of wheel spin. But this is the thing, all these tractors are, are bought for a particular job and by and large they did the job that they were intended to do. Different tractors did different jobs, but uh, eventually they, they did them all. But, uh, quite an operation, isn't it? You went to one of those taller drivers for a cold week, especially in East Anglia, where the wind hurt and they cold it. And uh, that was an exposed job. It's not surprising that uh, they often fall into the first day to to have cabs. In fact, some of them actually have things like uh, cut down complete motor cars as the cab. Just imagine it was lost in seven, lost in seven uh, body perched on there. It might look silly, but it keep the driver warm. So there it is. There's your, your tractors. Uh, we're going to look forward shortly to the 